Um. You keep doing Megalith on Edward there. Because that seems to be the one that beats the shit out of him. Okay, so one of them's down. I just need to, need, need, need to survive. Fuck. Good thing that stuff doesn't really do much damage to Kadoka right now! Okay. <sighs> Use Megalith on yourself, honey. You... Heal... Yourself. I mean, shit, why am I not using stuff on everyone? Okay, that was decent. It wasn't as good as hitting Edward, but you probably have a higher piety. Because I have a higher piety. In fact, my piety is ridiculous. So Kadelka hits like a truck. Good to know. Bitch! You underestimate my power. Or I've underestimated yours. Except you did pretty much no damage to me. Good job, James. Ghost James. Other James. Whatever James. Are you dead yet, other Kadelka? Good. My magic is beautiful. James needs more pie. Or er, James, wow. Edward needs more piety. And I need the spell revived so I can bring him back to life. Okay, come on, James. Eat this! You can't do anything to me, dude! This is a battle of magics and I've already won via piety score. Except I think he has the ability to heal. Oh, please don't let him have the ability to heal. That just makes things harder for me. Megalith, because Megalith is beautiful. Ooh, a whopping one in four damage. Oh dear. Honey, you don't even know my magic. somebody pulled this game off with both Kadoka and James as physical attackers and Edward as their magic user. I'm not gonna do it because that's stupid stupid idea, but it'd be funny. Alright, so that's three boss fights done in one recording session. It's less than an hour long. Okay. I knew this game was pretty short. I think I'm near the end of disc one already. But really? 
Apparently, yes. All right, you can have some more of those. Edward's not going to get any XP from this fight, is he? Son of a bitch. Um... Yeah, there we go. Yep, Edward got fuck all. Okay. Panacea. I think that gets rid of silence. Ooh, I'd be okay with that. What's this? What's this do? Purified by holy water. Okay. Oh, it's a save point. Cheek, cheek, cheek. I'm okay with that. I think I need to get the pieces of that uh, stained glass window there. Maybe? Is that it? There's a picture of stained glass of a martyr being burned at the stake. There's some kind of writing right at the bottom. It's in inintelligible because of the other colors. Maybe if you had something red to rub against it, you can make out the letters. Use the red glass part that was on the floor right next to the damn thing. And then 7038 written in Greek up here. If you look at the numbers, you're 7038. 7038, 7038. Okay. What's my health look like right now? Oh! I guess rooms like this heal me. Okay. And the deep size dance in front of the stained glass. 7038. 7038, 7038. Okay. We have to go get whatever is in that box. Did you see all those bodies? Yeah. Them's a lot of dead people. Be quite a party if they were alive. They've probably been abandoned for hundreds of years. Must be some fascinating old stories. I saw some pretty fresh ones, too. One who was shot. One who'd been cracked in the head with an axe. And some with no visible signs of injury. They must have been poisoned. I bet the new ones were fortune seekers like us. That old couple must. You mean to tell me they killed yes. all those people? Rubbish. All those deaths are rubbish. They're all liars and thieves anyway. This is still a monastery. This is still God's house, prison or no. Why all those liars and heathens are killed is none of my oh, concern. Oh God damn it, James! How could you possibly say a thing like that? That doesn't sound very priestly. I am not a priest. I am a bishop. I don't give a rat's ass what you are. Look, I'm not saying that all of those people were saints, okay? But that doesn't mean that they should be put to death. You saw that old couple. They're so well-mannered, kind. That has nothing to do with whether or not they're killers. Good manners? Yes. Think about it. Why would they leave the place such a mess? I don't know. You think they'd at least bury the body? Possibly. Anyway. I have this strange feeling we're not alone with all these bodies No and shit. You'd better keep your mouth shut. If you want to live. God, I love her. <laughs> okay. 7038. 7038. Okay, we're going to go open that now. Because if we don't, I'm going to forget. Which means back up the ladder! Or a fight. We can do that too, I guess. Oh, it's one of those hands. And is that a mirror look like? Probably. Oh well. Either way. I have revived. Thank the. Thank everything. Mega left the fuck out of you. I think Edward's gonna be my axe man for this game. It's gonna be my axe man, James. It's gonna be Pipe Man. Yeah. One has blades, one uses blunt. Alright, I'm, I'm okay with a one hit KO. I love that spell. That spell is made of beauty. Dun 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 Ooh! I got four whiskeys and nine breads, okay. The fuck do they have whiskey and bread for? Go up the fuck! 
Go up the fuck. Good, Kadelka. You're listening for once. Let's go get the thing. There we go. 7038. Okay. Mm, this is coming to lock. 7038. Lock opened. What the fuck's in it? Found guard's dart. Do you want to pick it up? Sure. The fuck that is. Um. Game, are you gonna- are you gonna- are you gonna tell me what it is? Wait, read. Guard's Diary. Okay. <clears throat> June 1st, 1716. It's been two months since I left Canterbury. Owing- <sighs> This is bad. <clears throat> it's been two months since I left Canterbury, owing to my stay to, at St. Clair's. Lord Webster had said that the weather would still be warm at this time of the year, but it's still brisk in the fishing villages lining the coast. After days of being knocked about in a carriage, I finally arrived at the Nemetin prison. An evil-looking place, leering down on a barren plain from atop a cliff battered by chill sea breezes. Lord Webster told me to keep the strictest confidence. I cannot say what lies within this old, lonely building. Only that while I am yet young, I have been a guard many years, but I have never seen nor heard of a gull built in such a place as this. While Lord Webster didn't tell me much about the prison's history, it is easy to imagine this part, part of this forbidding place played in quite conspiracies and political struggles. Although I do not look forward to spending my days here, I have no choice. My family depends on it. June 2nd, 1716. Nemeton Prison. A hell on earth. While conditions here are no worse than Newgate, they are no better. I had imagined it would be so, but imagining a thing and actually experiencing it are very different. I shudder to think of the countless souls imprisoned here over the centuries. There are people from all walks of life here. Members of the Pale are moved from contention for an inheritance to a simple barber's locked away to prevent them from repeating what they innocently heard while performing their jobs. Locked away. And tortured and killed. My research into the prison's records show that only a select few of those sent here were ever convicted of a crime. This is not the simple prison it claims to be. It is rather simply a dungeon, where those in power steal seal away those without it who stood in their way. How ironic that this place, built as a house of God, should become a house of horrors forsaken by him. June 3rd, 1716. I have discovered something nearly impossible to believe, because I do not wish to. According to the prison's records, from 1632 to year last, over 8,200 people have met their maker within these walls. And these are only those for whom there are records. How many more hapless souls have died locked away here, with no one even caring? June 4th, 1716. Today, I was ordered by the warden to watch over the prisoners in the West Wing. Although this is my first assignment since arriving, I do not look forward to it. This is different from punishing some simple beggars. What sort of man could take pleasure in beating women and children? Received a letter from Mum in Southampton today. She complains that I wasn't able to attend my sister's wedding. Apparently, she married a Gibbs boy, one of the wealthier landowning families in the area. I'm sure she'll be happy. She has been brought up well and should have no problem fitting in even to a gentry family. It seems just like yesterday that she was a baby, following me around clutching her favorite little doll. I'm fiercely proud of her, though, even though I worry she may be pampered a bit too much. I wish her the best of luck as she now starts her own family. June 5th, 1716. We began the questioning of Prisoner 27 today. The warden tells us he was instructed to do so by one of the nobles currently in favor with the crown. He looks to have been a man of good learning and some standing. He broke down and cried like a baby after the iron was pressed into his chest. Knowing he will never be released... We need not take care to leave him whole. I'm used to using water or a rack, something that would not leave a mark for such things, but here there is no purpose, no desire to convert a heathen or bring about repentance. Here, the punishment is only meant to cause as much pain as possible until death. Well, that's not very nice. 